doing the right thing. Okay, hopefully you're just seeing slides now. Great. Well, great. hi everyone. My name is Sally and as Nicole mentioned, I'm a senior scientist and program director here with the NCI Health Systems and Interventions Research Branch and I lead our healthcare teams initiative. And of course, I'm very thrilled to be joined by uh, Dr. Netta, an epidemiologist and program director with the NCI Office of IS. Before we jump in, I do just wanna say a big thank you to Sean Burke and Mark Earhart at UCF and the UC San Diego DISC and INSEP teams uh, for the opportunity to talk with you today. So during our time today, we thought we might orient you to NCI's Division of Cancer Control and Population Sciences, where most of our teams and implementation science work is housed. Then I'll talk a little bit about the Healthcare Delivery Research Program and the Healthcare Teams Initiative, and then turn things over to Gila to talk more about uh, implementation science interest. And we've also tried to reserve some time today for your questions. Of course, you know, we can't cover it all, so you can always reach out to us via email and we'll share contact information at the end. Before we jump into it though, I do wanna just take a moment to ask you to reflect. So think about a time recently where you've personally had to interact with the healthcare system for either yourself, a loved one, or a friend. What was that experience like? Was it easy? Was it clear who you needed to contact or what you needed to do next? Did you feel confident that everyone was on the same page? Did you actually feel like part of the care team? If you answered no or that it was confusing, of course, you're definitely not alone. I know I'm preaching to the choir here, of course, accessing mental health care is its own frustratingly pervasive challenge. But specific to cancer care, a recent survey of people who've experienced cancer found over a third said they had to share information from one healthcare provider to another, quote unquote, all the time. Additionally, only 50% of cancer caregivers report that they're satisfied with coordination of care for their loved one. And of course, behavioral healthcare is also an extremely important part of cancer prevention and comprehensive cancer care. We know approximately 85%, you know, the estimates range quite widely, but about 85% of people screened or treated for cancer report psychological distress. 30 to 35% experience a psychiatric disorder. We know that uh, individuals with psychiatric conditions and cancer have undoubtedly higher mortality rates. And another 15 to 20% experience distressing psychosocial conditions that don't quite rise to the level of diagnosis, but certainly impact daily life. Concerningly, in a 2019 survey, 69% of uh, the respondents said that they needed psychological support during or after their cancer care, but of those, one in three said that it was not available to them. So part of the problem, of course, is that, you know, healthcare historically has been very siloed and hasn't recognized or really managed the interdependencies that actually exist among all the players involved in whole person care. For example, you know, many healthcare pathways, which I know many of you are very, um, uh, well-versed in, these are the kind of general guidelines or workflows for care, tend to conceptualize care as this nice sequentially interdependent um, process, kind of like this example of the cancer patient journey, or depicted as a very friendly social network of some kind. But, you know, in reality, we know navigating healthcare really looks more like this, where care requires teaming, both within smaller component teams and across a larger team of teams or multi-team system over time. And the tension between this kind of ideal and the reality is really, um, as well as some of my personal experiences, are really part of what led me to pursue a career in understanding and improving how healthcare teams function and coordinate over time and to the development of the healthcare teams and care coordinate, coordination initiatives at NCI. So, I joined the NCI Healthcare Delivery Research Program, or HDRP, in late 2016, and we are part of the Division of Cancer Control and Population Sciences. This is a very large division, and our mission is to reduce cancer risk, cancer incidence, and death, and enhance the quality of life for cancer survivors by supporting innovative research and recommending ways to apply that research to improve cancer prevention and healthcare across the cancer continuum, which you see on this slide. Of course, as our name suggests, our division oversees a really wide range of research. So everything from surveillance of cancer incidence, mortality, and related epi research. Uh, for example, our division leads the annual report to the nation on cancer. We also support etiology and prevention research to understand and address the genetic, environmental, and behavioral factors that increase cancer risk, um, including nutrition, tobacco, alcohol, and other substance use. 
Um, my program, specifically the healthcare delivery research program, supports a large portfolio focused on cancer detection, including research on how to improve uptake of screening tests and the HPV vaccine, as well as research aiming to understand and improve the delivery of cancer treatment, survivorship care, patient symptom management, quality of life, and other outcomes. Um, DCCPS the at the division level also includes several offices, the Office of Cancer Survivorship, Health Equity, and Implementation Science, which Gila will talk about in just a moment. So even though as a division, we kind of cover this broad range of science, we're all clearly working towards shared goals. Um, just one example in two, uh, 2023, our then director, Monica Bertignoli, who you know, is now the director of the entire NIH, oversaw the development of the National Cancer Plan. And the plan basically outlines eight essential goals that the cancer community as a whole really needs to strive for if we're to prevent more cancers, reduce deaths, and improve the lives of everyone after diagnosis. Um, our division is really helping to advance all of these goals in some way. I won't go into detail, but definitely encourage you to learn more at nationalcancerplan.cancer.gov. Um, in 2022, our division also um, did a request for information and gathered some input on further uh, future priorities specific for cancer control and population sciences research. Um, that resulted in identifying six priority areas that you see on this slide. I won't go into each of these, but you can find information on the link here. And I just want to reiterate, these are clearly not the only division priorities, but rather really kind of cross-cutting themes where we're intensifying focus across all areas of the research we support. So for example, in the team's portfolio, we're strongly uh, encouraging research focused on the needs of historically marginalized populations and populations experiencing health disparities, and also uh, encourage research on care coordination and teaming issues during disasters and our climate change and cancer funding announcements. Um, DCCPS also invests quite a bit in behavioral health research on everything from tobacco, cannabis, alcohol, pain management, and of course, mental health. Um, I thought this group would be interested. A recent NIH-wide portfolio analysis found 92 grants funded in the previous five years or so focused on mental health during cancer survivorship, which we define as kind of the, the, the long period from diagnosis onward. Most, not surprisingly, focused on depression or depressive mood, distress, PTSD symptoms, or stress management, but actually zero focus on cancer survivorship and serious mental illness. Now, these are not my areas of science clearly, uh, but I'm happy to connect you with colleagues. Gila and I are happy to connect you with colleagues overseeing any of these portfolios at any time. Some of that work, um, like studies of different approaches to delivering mental health care to people with cancer and a lot of our implementation science grants are supported by my program, the Healthcare Delivery Research Program or HDRP. We're of course an extramural program, which means we support and manage research that's done by external investigators via grants, cooperative agreements or contracts. Our mission is specifically to advance research that reduces the burden of cancer by improving the delivery of cancer related care. Um, we oversee anywhere from 120 to $150 million a year in funding, and that supports between 100 and 200 grants on average per year. These support a really wide range of care delivery research across the entire continuum. So everything from observational research that's identifying modifiable targets for intervention, like patient and health professional behavior, health system characteristics, information technology design and implementation. Sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background there. Um, intervention research that's uh, developing and testing care delivery interventions and evaluating the impact on things like early detection of cancer, care quality, quality of life and health equity, uh, patterns of care studies that use EHR data and cancer registry data to look at patterns about things like where and how fast new clinical treatments are spreading. And of course, traditional health services research identifying patient provider and system level factors associated with utilization of cancer care, disparities in care and variation in cancer outcomes. Um, and last but not least, a big portion of our portfolio is also supporting measure and metric development, including patient reported and caregiver reported outcomes. And an, an example of this is the PRO CTC CTCAE measurement system, which some of you may know that's the standard system used to collect patient reported symptoms in all uh, cancer clinical trials, as well as many other types of clinical trials. 
Um, as I mentioned, the program and the division has really invested in research on teaming and care coordination since about 2015, because we know it really is the backbone of high quality care across the cancer continuum. You know, as a team effectiveness scientist by training, it's been really exciting, in my opinion, to see the language of teams adopted in healthcare in the last 20 years. But, you know, admittedly, the field really still lacks a shared lexicon, which of course you all know complicates comparisons across studies and results in variable or honestly sometimes even contradictory estimates of intervention effectiveness. So in our work, we've adopted the definition developed by the IOM Roundtable and supplemented it with nearly, a, you know, there's almost a hundred years of research on team effectiveness led by uh, organizational psychology and the uh, management sciences. So what do we mean when we use the word team? To us, teams are really both a structure and a collection of processes that team members use to perform interdependent work with the aim of achieving shared goals. You know, my sense though in doing this in the last two decades or so is that we tend to use the term team pretty darn loosely in healthcare. You know, I see a lot of kind of co-acting groups call themselves a team, but actually pay zero attention to the teamwork required to achieve their goals. Real teams, on the other hand, tend to have shared goals that require interdependent effort and shared accountability. And ideally, they're also paying attention to the behaviors, the attitudes, the cognitions that they're using to work together. Uh, crews, a special kind of team, I think are really more of what we see in frontline care delivery settings, kind of where interactions are generally defined in advance to some extent by a profession or specialty based roles. And then we've got people kind of rotating in and out uh, to fill those roles. Uh, Multi-team systems or MTSs refer to a larger collection of teams working toward a shared goal, like providing comprehensive care to someone managing both cancer and diabetes or working together on a multi-site trial. And I think it's really important, you know, it's clear teamwork behaviors matter even in situations where there is no clear or stable team structure. And that really just describes, I, I think, most of healthcare. So Amy Edmondson and her colleagues coined the term teaming as a verb to really describe applying the mindset and practices of effective teams to situations where you don't have kind of these nice, neat, stable, clear defined teams. And if you're thinking about this uh, in the context of cancer, you know, I think there are some other important things to remember. You know, characteristics vary depending on the clinical activity, the phase of the continuum or the care transition that you're looking at. Uh, for example, the interdependencies, coordination demands and team composition is really different if you're studying routine or implementation in the context of routine cancer screening in a primary care clinic versus um, care management tools for people experiencing cancer and other chronic conditions like diabetes or chronic depression, or even more different if you're looking just at treatment planning in kind of multidisciplinary tumor board settings. It's also really important to define if your interest is on intra-professional groups or teams, inter-professional groups or teams, and multidisciplinary teamwork or coordination. And of course, to consider how your research might be informed by existing science in these areas, um, especially existing work, I think on multi-team systems more and more, because I think that's especially important given that much of cancer care and other care today really plays out over inpatient and outpatient settings that may or may not be part of the same health system and increasingly includes care in the home. In the context of cancer, that includes telehealth and you know, home chemotherapy administration, oral chemotherapy medication is being really taken up uh, to a large extent now. So home care is a big piece of this as well. Um, we also recognize that teamwork in cancer care unfolds in a multi-level context. So we're very interested in multi-level studies and multi-level interventions that consider things like poli how policy, health system, hospital or clinic, individual provider and patient factors are interacting to influence outcomes like receipt of guideline concordant care, care quality, patient safety, morbidity and mortality. And additionally, you know, as we talked about, the person impacted by cancer and their caregivers are critical, but super highly understudied teams. Um, one investigator leading in this area is Dr. Donna Pozlesny at University of Pittsburgh. And in her current, she's got a really interesting R01 right now where she's testing an intervention to improve patient family caregiver based uh, team based management of the medical regime that's required after stem cell transplantation. That's a very intense regime. Um, and she's looking at it specifically 
um, in, in uh, patients with bone marrow, uh, blood, or lymphatic cancers and their caregivers. So given that context, um, our division has a lot of tools to stimulate research, um, including identifying scientific gaps and trends, funding research through grants, supplements, and contracts, developing data resources, supporting research networks, and partnering with key stakeholders. Um, for example, in the healthcare teams portfolio, we've looked at the CR Medicare data to understand clinical team composition for people with cancer and other chronic conditions, and to look at the associations between multidisciplinary consultation prior to first line therapy and receipt of guideline concordant treatment. Not surprisingly, there's a positive association there. Um, we've also done systematic reviews and conceptual work. We've published several frameworks that we hope will stimulate research. We've also done some primary data collection, including a Delphi study where we work to identify teamwork competencies that clinicians and patients need to team well um, across disciplinary, geographic, and organizational boundaries. And we've also partnered with the American Society for Clinical Oncology in several ways, including um, two special issues of their journal, the Journal of Oncology Practice on Teams and Cancer Care. The most recent was published in January 2023. It had, I think, 15 papers and a couple invited commentaries. So definitely encourage you to check those out if you're interested in this area. Um, we've also, of course, convened the research community. Um, for example, um, in, at the end of last year, we hosted a workshop on measures and methods in this uh, area. Speakers were arranged. They included patient advocates, current NCI awardees, as well as leaders in health services research, organizational behavior, and team behavior, like Craig Pollock, Ingrid Nebhardt, and John Matthew. Uh, of course, you can watch all the sessions and find a workshop summary on the website here. We also support the healthcare team's cyber discussion series. Um, each year, this series features a different theme. This year's uh, focus is on advanced practice providers, and you can register for both of these sessions via the link on the slide, which we will be sure to share the slides with you. Um, previous topics are wide ranging, everything from disaster resilience, social risks, telehealth, and interprofessional approaches to addressing financial hardship. And of course, you can find recordings of any of these topic discussions as well. Not surprisingly, funding opportunities are the tools uh, that people are usually the most excited to hear about. These are just a couple of examples related to teaming and care coordination um, and related implementation questions that we participate in. I'll talk a little bit more about the first one um, in more detail. I won't talk about the rest tonight or today, but uh, you can plug the ID numbers into Google and read the specifics or reach out to me and I'm happy to connect you with the right folks. So I'll talk a little bit more about our notice of special interest on interprofessional teamwork and coordination during cancer treatment and diagnosis. This is encouraging R01 and P01 level research, as well as developmental and exploratory R21 or R03 applications. And it's really encouraging research that identifies effective strategies for improving the performance of interprofessional cancer care teams during diagnosis or treatment. Uh, studies addressing care coordination challenges either within and or between care settings or during care transitions and or advances sound measurement of relevant constructs. So just a quick couple of examples of research that's encouraged through this notice, noting it's not just limited to these, but some examples you know, include studies that are trying to identify modifiable features of care team structure or care processes that are associated with differences in cancer care quality and patient outcomes, studies advancing uh, measures of or measurement of relevant uh, teamwork concepts in this context, um, studies identifying characteristics that the patient, caregiver, team, delivery organization, health system, or community and policy levels that influence the functioning and effectiveness of interprofessional cancer care teams, um, as well as intervention work. So studies working to develop and test interventions to improve cancer care quality and patient outcomes by either modifying the structure or functioning of interprofessional teams or by engaging patients and caregivers as members of their cancer care team, as well as studies testing interprofessional approaches to reduce disparities in diagnosis and treatment or improve clinical trial participation, as well as studies to understand and improve the implementation of related interventions. Again, these are just examples. They're not the only types of research that could be responsive. I'm more than happy to talk with you about your specific interests. Um, to apply, 
you do have to submit through one of the funding announcements listed in the notice. Um, these do include the dissemination and the implementation R03, R21, and R01 announcements that Gila will talk about in just a moment. But it's important, regardless of the announcement that you apply for, you have to list the NOC number in box 4B of the application form. Otherwise, we can't count it. Um, if this interests you in any way, please definitely check out the recording of the pre-application webinar and don't hesitate, reach out to my colleague Veronica or myself. We can take a look at a one pager, talk with you about study sections that might be a good fit and of course answer any other questions you might have. So finally for my section, I just wanted to share a few examples. This is kind of just a small snapshot of some of the grants um, that are uh, really kind of focusing on teaming and care coordination that NCI is currently supporting. So they include studies developing EHR and claims-based data analytics to capture care team composition, coordination, and communication, and many, many intervention studies. Uh, for example, Dr. Evan Grabois at the Medical University of South Carolina is leading a clinical trial evaluating a patient navigation-based intervention to address disparities in receipt of post-operative radiation therapy among patients with head and neck cancer. And Dr. Shelley Ellis at uh, the University of Kansas has incorporated teamwork principles and the language of multi-team systems in um, a implementation intervention that she designed to address disparities in receipt of genomic testing for people in rural areas diagnosed with cancer. Um, you can definitely read more about any of these studies on uh, NIH Reporter. Um, so with that, I will actually stop here and turn things over to Gila. Great, thanks, Sally. You can hear me okay? I'm gonna take yes, that. Yes, we can hear you well. Yes, Excellent. thanks, Gila. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, huge thank you to um, Folks for inviting us and, and Sally for that excellent introduction um, of NCI in our division. I just wanted to um, build upon that excellent intro as well as um, description of healthcare delivery research program and all of the great work that you've been leading over there. Um, so just to share a bit about our division's focus on implementation science. Uh, which our division sees as a key cross-cutting area across the cancer control continuum, both for behavioral health and healthcare delivery research. And as Sally mentioned, a lot of our work um, has been uh, um, held in, collab in collaboration with our healthcare delivery research program. Uh, so because implementation science cuts across division activities, our team sits within the DCCPS Office of the Director and works across program areas to, to achieve these following goals. So we seek to advance the science of implementation. Um, and one of the ways in which we do that actually is um, co-hosting the uh, annual meeting um, that uh, Nicole mentioned earlier. Um, which Academy Health became a partner for um, about 10 years ago. So uh, that's been uh, a key effort um, to advance the science of implementation. We also seek to integrate implementation science into research across the cancer control continuum and foster engagement among researchers, practitioners, and policymakers. Um, so on the next slide, I wanted to highlight um, one uh, on the next slide, um, and oh, perfect. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> uh, one way we collaborate across the division um, is through the development of funding initiatives to support a range of implementation studies across the cancer control, control continuum. And we work particularly closely, as Sally mentioned, with HDRP, um, in a range of these, and she mentioned her NOCI, which is connected to this um, funding opportunity. So key among our team's initiatives is the dissemination and implementation research and health program announcements. Um, and these are a set of NIH-wide funding opportunities that serve to organize interest in implementation science across the NIH. So this alphabet soup you can see here under each of the different mechanisms are essentially the institute centers and offices that are signed on. Um, we now have 23 institute centers and offices signed on to these um, and different ones participate in different 
um, mechanism. So you see we have the RO1, the RO3, and the R21. And, uh, and um, just quickly, the two contacts listed there are the NCI contacts, but each IC has its own contact. Thanks, Sally. Go ahead. Um, so I encourage you to read these um, announcements if you haven't already, but on the next slide, this essentially summarizes the purpose of these, um, which is really wide ranging to support a wide range of studies across disease areas, populations, and settings that will essentially test strategies to overcome a range of implementation barriers for a range of evidence-based things. Um, we also emphasize um, the need for studies to promote equitable implementation, um, and not just to focus on implementation, but also studies to consider de-implementation and um, methods and measures development. So again, I encourage you to take a look at those, but here is NCI specific interests. And you'll see here some things that are also consistent with um, research around um, team effectiveness. Uh, so studies to promote sustainability and scale up um, of cancer care delivery to coordinate cancer treatment across fragmented systems optimizing survivorship care among oncology and non-oncology providers. So I think a range of um, NCI specific interest areas that is really consistent with um, the area that uh, Sally leads at, at our division. So on the next slide, I just wanted to point out um, a, a range of key scientific areas that um, members of the IS team are leading currently, a lot of which um, align with these DCCPS key cross-cutting areas of focus that Sally alluded to earlier. Um, and then on the next slide, uh, this figure comes from a portfolio analysis of those dissemination and implementation research and health grants uh, funded by the NCI. So over the course of these funding opportunities since 2005, across NIH, we funded over 400 awards and um, NCI alone has funded over 100 of those. Um, and so this figure essentially shows how we've added areas of emphasis with each reissuance, um, highlighting research priority areas in the field. Um, and I am delighted to inform you actually that we have just received official approval as of last week to proceed with the 2025 reissuance. Um, so please stay tuned for that. And um, on the next slide, just briefly, um, and Sally already described, so here are essentially two examples of ways that these funding opportunities and dissemination implementation research and health have been leveraged by NCI staff. So the example that Sally described for interprofessional teamwork and coordination. Um, and then on the right side, you can see um, it's also been leveraged by our Center for Global Health. Um, which, uh, again, that is a broad reaching notice of special interest for any implementation study across the cancer control continuum, but specifically in low and middle income countries or other low resource settings. So if you're focused on uh, those types of settings, um, also wanted to mention this NOCI. On the next slide, I just wanted to mention a resource that we do have available for those who aren't already aware. Um, our website, we post, um, we have the full research strategy along with the specific aims for about a dozen um, grants. And you can see on the top right there, Irene Sue from UCSD. Um, and it has been a great resource and probably the most popular website of our entire IS team webpage. Um, so thank you to Irene and others for sharing their work. Um, on the next slide, I did want to mention, in addition to the dissemination, implementation, research, and health funding opportunities, um, a few more funding opportunities that invite implementation science applications and for which the science of team effectiveness would be relevant. Um, so I do encourage you to take a closer look, um, but just to mention the first one is our pragmatic trials funding opportunity which is quite broad, seeking applications across the cancer control continuum and requiring a pragmatic trial study design. So interventions could include team-based interventions and outcomes could include quality of care or implementation outcomes in community, public health or healthcare settings. Um, on the next slide, the other funding opportunity I wanted to mention is our climate change and cancer funding opportunity. Um, for which both Sally and I are um, involved. And, um, 
an apology cell, you may also be involved in the pragmatic trials. I have lost track. But um, in any case, for the climate change and cancer one, we are interested in applications, again, across the care continuum for both behavioral health and healthcare delivery research. Um, and specifically, we're interested, I, I wanted to call attention to um, our interest in applications that seek to understand and address ways to mitigate the impacts of climate-related cancer care delivery disruptions um, and the role of care teams, given the critical role of care teams. So studies of strategies to foster resilient teams or ways to leverage teaming to foster resilient systems could be uh, valuable here. So finally, I just wanted to conclude with a couple slides thinking about the integrating team effectiveness science and implementation science. And um, apologies to those of you on the call who wrote this paper and are very familiar um, with this work. But um, I thought this was a really uh, nice summary of ways we can think about um, integrating these two areas. And you can think about, um, teams as the evidence-based intervention to implement, or think about team-based implementation strategies to improve uh, teaming um, and team effectiveness. So um, what was nice in this paper in table one, they um, talk about common team archetypes in implementation science. And um, particularly useful, I thought, was um, this heuristic that the authors developed to think about those team-based implementation strategies. So whether you're um, trying to create or reorganize teams, uh, target teams or improve teaming. So I think um, additional studies in all of these areas um, would be really valuable to fill an important gap um, and connecting the two fields. And then finally, you know, a few areas of opportunities to integrate team effectiveness science and implementation science. And, um, you know, a huge thanks to Sally for helping me think this through. Um, so there's evidence that teamwork matters for implementation. Practices with good teamwork reported being further along in adoption of the patient-centered medical home model than practices reporting poorer teamwork. Um, better adherence to HEDIS measures and many practices participating um, in the CMMI oncology care model evaluation, they utilize team-based implementation strategies. Uh, so things like providing weekly reports to the care teams, documenting all active OCM care episodes on their schedule and daily huddles to discuss quality measures. Um, so it's not surprising um, trying to implement practice change in an environment with poor teamwork where people don't trust or communicate well is like trying to paddle a boat upstream. I like this, um, you know, visual that Sally has has created. And so change efforts are going to be slower, run into more hurdles, are not prioritized. Um, but there are many opportunities um, that remain. So understanding and addressing relationships between implementation and clinic or clinical teams. Um, the team composition and functioning with practice change and implementation outcomes, um, and especially with regard to sustainment or de-implementation, which are, as I mentioned, key areas of emphasis for um, of interest to NCI. Also understanding and addressing the impact of um, team membership change on implementation outcomes, and I think this can be particularly valuable when you think about practice change turnover um, as a common significant challenge. Another way to, um, another key opportunity is in developing and testing those strategies to further foster team effectiveness um, as, and, and specifically with attention to improving scale up of EBPs. Um, and then finally specification of uh, team members and understanding their interactions and processes to facilitate delivery of bundled uh, multi-level interventions and strategies. Um, so with that, I just wanted to end with mentioning that the implementation science team, um, here we are. Uh, please feel free to reach out to any of us with questions. Um, and finally, wanted to just end um, I won't go into too many details here, but in addition to our uh, op funding opportunities for research studies, we also support a, a range of training opportunities. Um, so I will definitely encourage you to um, 
look at these in more detail, but the specific one I wanted to call attention to, uh, NCI, uh, which is new, NCI just recently released an NCI Mentored Research Scientist Development Award, KO1s. And April O is our lead contact here. Um, but this is uh, a great opportunity for implementation, for budding early career new implementation scientists to get um, training support. So with that, thank you for your attention and I will pass it back to our hosts, thanks. Thank you so much, um, Mila and Sally. Um, that was super, super helpful. Um, we, I'm inviting everyone to either um, pose your questions in the chat or you're welcome to unmute and share your reflections and comments. We did, um, I'll, I'll start with one of my own reflections.